welcome, uh, welcome everybody as we get uh, ready to start uh, the school season. And we thank you for joining us here at Dilworth Elementary School, a school known for its ex excellence in education. And just year, this year, the National Education Association's top honor for teaching excellence went to uh, Dilworth second grade teacher, Sharon uh, Gallagher Fishbaugh, who is now president of the Utah Education Association. Uh, this school, its staff, and its programs are one of the great examples of what we can do right in our education system in Utah. And we hope one day Utah's entire school system will be number one in the nation. But right now, even with top-notch educators in our state, many of our schools are suffering. They're not being funded, and they're not number one. That's why Cheryl Allen, a longtime educator, and myself are here today. As governor and lieutenant governor, we can help. You, can, you can't talk about Utah's well-being without putting education first. Others have talked about education being their top priority, but we need it. We need to have a 10-year education plan, just like we have for transportation. But for education, unfortunately, this state's been using the Band-Aid plan. Education is a shot in the arm for our economy, both short-term and long-term. Money for education stays in our community and provides local jobs. And education is the foundation of economic development. Businesses want an educated workforce in our community. And education is the nucleus of freedom, prosperity, and self-sufficiency for our communities. Just look at our college graduates. On average, the college graduate earns twice the income a person with a high school diploma makes. But guess what? Less than half of our high school students in Utah go to college directly out of high school. That makes Utah 47th in the country. Only Arizona, Alaska, and Idaho send fewer kids to college after high school. We're trying to build a high-wage, high-value 21st century economy in the Beehive State, but we can't do it without an A grade in our education system. In Education Week's recent ranking, we turn up dead last when it comes to uh, per-pupil funding for our education system. No other states are even close. Our, na our neighboring state, Wyoming, is number one. And Utah spends, as I mentioned, the least per student in education funding. And to add insult to injury, lawmakers again cut our education budget this year. At the same time, we have about 22,000 new students coming into our education system in both public education, K-12, and higher education. And now some of them want to turn down 100 million, 100, over $100 million in federal funds for Utah's children. It's shameful that the legislature spent four hours last week discussing whether they should accept this funding after they've cut hundreds of millions of dollars out of our education system over the last few years. Leaders in education know about Utah's problems and they have plans to fix them. But without financial backing, they can't put those plans into action. We need to get moving, and I have a plan to do that. We call it our six R's. R number one is renew our commitment. Simply pumping more money into our education system isn't the sole answer. I want to see every, everyone working together to build a brighter future for our state. Education is a community responsibility. First of all, we need to get more adults involved, especially college students. So I'm proposing an education core where we get uh, college students and recent graduates who will serve as reading volunteers into some of our underserved schools. And then strengthen parental involvement. Students can't succeed without their parents. In my household, uh, we read to our children every night, and my wife and I try to help our students every day with their homework, and we need more parents being involved doing the same thing. And we need to leverage our citizen volunteers. We have a, a great number of citizens who want to help in our school system. And we need to involve 
the business community as well. Uh, businesses know what's needed in our education system. They know the kind of graduates they want, and they need to be involved in the discussion. R number two, a raised standards. Higher achievement starts with higher expectations. We can't accept media, mediocrity, and we can't accept the status quo. We know every student has different aspirations, but we have to raise the bar so that after high school, every graduate is prepared for something better. R number three, rigor and ma in math and science. I'm an engineer, and I know the importance of math and science in today's 21st century jobs. And we have a rapid-fire technology economy that's changing quickly, and we need to be ready to provide students to those fields. Utah schools have put more emphasis on science, technology, and, and engineering and math skills, but we need to do even better to compete. Our number four, rethink accountability. I plan to set higher standards for our education system in collaboration with the Utah State Board of Education. We must ensure that state standardized tests for high schoolers measure college and workforce ready skills. We must make performance data transparent, user friendly, and easily accessible online for parents to understand uh, how their kids are doing in school. And I believe we must establish a master teachers program where veteran teachers can prepare a standardized curriculum uh, for younger teachers coming into schools. They can, uh, the new teachers can take those and then formulate their own curriculums using those master teachers curriculums. R number five, return local control. Local school districts should be empowered to make education decisions they need and not the legislature, which often tries to be a super school board. We must also push to make voters directly, uh, or to allow voters to directly elect the Utah State Board of Education in a nonpartisan election. Our number six, responsible school funding. We need fair, broad-based, and stable funding that meet the needs of our educational system and the needs of our children. So as governor, I will protect and prioritize K-12 funding with limits on how much money can be transferred by our legislature, and protect funding for class size reduction, and recommend the, the use of our school buildings for multi-purposes, making them truly uh, community schools. Making the grade won't be easy, but we can roll up our sleeves and study a bit harder. We know we face budget challenges in Utah, but shortchanging education doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense now, doesn't make sense for our future. It makes the re recovery process even more slow for Utah. We can balance the budget and fully fu fund education. That's why Cheryl Allen and I believe that we are the ones to lead the charge for our education system.